guys. I mean, hey, creme de la crop. Welcome back to part two of the acrylic painting tutorial. We're just gonna jump right in, continue where we left off from. Um, yeah, and have some fun, okay? If you haven't seen part one yet, please go back and see that because you're, you're not gonna know what the heck you're doing, okay? Link is also in the description. And again, please make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you liked that other video. If you're at the right place, if you already saw part one and you are ready to finish this painting, then let's do it. So this is where we left off. We did our sky and our mountains. And now I was thinking that we could add some water and possibly a dock to make it into a bit of a lake. And so the water would be here and the dock would be like right here in the middle coming from that end. So I'm just grabbing the bigger paintbrush again, getting some water on it. And now we'll mix some more paint to get some different hues. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take about half of this blue and pop it into here. And actually take a quarter of that blue and move it here. We don't need all of that blue. What I'm going to do with the middle one is lighten it up a little bit. So we'll just take all of this white and add it to the blue and let's mix that. Now we're gonna make the second color. Um, so no need to wash the paintbrush really here because you know it's, it's lighter than the blue that we have in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take all of this yellow and mix it in with the blue and see what color we get. Okay, it's pretty swampy green, if you ask me. It's not necessarily the color I was looking for. So I might take a bit of black actually. And I might take a bit of white and blue actually. So let's just grab what we can from here. Well, that's a pretty color. And yeah, so I am kind of looking for more of a forest green vibe. Ay ay ay. And um I think we've achieved it, to be honest with you. So okay, whoops. Actually, I think I also want a dark blue, so we'll take from our original blue and pop it over here and then add some black and we'll mix that. And I'll also add some white, but I just have to grab some more white paint. Okay, I was trying to put my white paint directly into that thing, but I missed severely. So I'll just move it over here and mix it. And yeah, okay, we've got the color I was looking for. This nice charcoaly blue thing. All right, time to get back to painting. So let's make sure that our paintbrush is a little bit wet. Yeah. I might not even need to use the other colors because this is already kind of the color I wanted. Sometimes you do have to actually lift the painting off the easel to get at the bottom of it, which is why sometimes I just like doing it on a flat surface overall anyway. But um, I can also just rotate it and put it back on the easel that way. If you care about what the side of your painting looks like, just be aware that you might get paint on it by, by rotating it, just because the bottom of the easel probably has some paint on it from the drip. From the drip. And also because I'm pretty messy when I paint, so there's definitely just me painting on the easel by accident. Yeah, that is a gorgeous color. Okay, 
Okay, I took too much water there. <laughs> Make sure you throw some paint on there or use your paper that towel. But sometimes I kind of like adding too much water and pulling off the paint because it kind of creates the illusion of like a reflection of the sky. So sometimes I don't really care if I get water on the canvas. I thrive on my mistakes. Okay, you might want to make it a bit lighter over here because if it's light in the middle here, under where the dock is supposed to be, it's like, well, how is the light reflecting on the water from under the dock? And well, I don't have an answer for you. Okay, for some reason there's some black paint here and it and it's wet and it almost ruined my painting. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pretty much satisfied with the water, but we can add the other colors now if we want, because it'll be hard to do it later with the dock there. So I'm just gonna fix that black part. Or fuck it up, I don't know, you know, whatever. Okay, so let's add the other water colors. Uh, I don't want this much green, so I'll just put it in the water, get some of that uh, paint off. And then let's make sure we get some of that water off. Yeah, I just don't want it to mess up the current water situation. If you want to do more of a reflection, by the way, go ahead and dip into the lighter blue and mix it with the darker color over here, like the charcoal one, so it's not like so completely different. So now we'll add a dock and we'll use the finer paintbrush and i already have some black paint here oddly enough but i might just bring the land forward a little bit and just make it look like it's faded in because if i don't do that then i'll have to do more work and add detail to the other end of it and the objects around it by extension and i don't want to do that put like a little bit of a you know to make a uh like a structure what whatever that's called a structure a, a beam a support beam yeah i'm not sure This is super hard. Maybe don't hold a phone in your hand while you're painting, pro tip. As you can see, I'm kind of messing up here. Like this is too dark. So I'm just gonna take my bigger brush again and take a bit of black. And I hope it'll be a bit lighter. I'll use some water and the paper towel to make, you know, to get some of that black off. Okay, there's definitely some white there from my paintbrush. It's a good idea to wipe your brush and make sure that you get all the other paint off of it, um, either by washing it or using a paper towel. 
But I'm sure you can tell by now, I don't really care about making mistakes because everything is fixable. So now the land has come too far and I want to add some water back over it. So what we can do is we can clean our brush and get our lake color again to paint over the black part once it dries. Because as we recall, the mountains are more in the background than the water, the water's in the foreground. So yeah, that is the rule of painting. So ideally I'd wait for this to dry, but I'm feeling a bit risky right now. So let's see what happens. Yeah, okay. All right, two mistakes right there. Water on the brush, and I didn't wait for the black to dry. So yeah, so just add more paint. Okay, so now we can think about other objects to add, like what else might be found in this area. Um, like maybe we could add some trees. Yeah, let's let's add some trees. I need more paint though, so I'll just grab that. So we'll put some pine trees here. And I do want it to kind of just like blend in like the dock and like everything else because we've already established that it's kind of foggy and blurry here. Trees are pretty easy, like you just kind of make these downward brush strokes like this because that's how they normally look or fall in real life. And a nice flare at the end looks good too. And we'll do the other side. I'll put one more here because sometimes symmetry sucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> And most trees do get wider at the bottom. I don't know why. Maybe because the lower branches have had more time to grow. I don't know, that sounds right. Let's go with that. are little little grassy things kind of along the side I don't know if this just looks like a swamp now but swamps have these things right okay cool yeah I'm cool with that 
This painting is pretty much done. The only things that I'd add here now are some clouds to match the reflections we made, but that's not like super necessary. My water reflections kind of lost the rhyme or reason, so I don't know. But you can just fix the water reflection by either mixing a lighter version of these colors again, or doing the whole add water mistakenly situation to fix it like I did earlier. Um, yeah, so you can do that if you want to. But if your water reflections look fine and they're not under the dock, then you can go ahead and add some clouds kind of above them in the sky. And then, yeah, and I might add some birds as well. So let's just add the clouds and let's just get a bit of white paint. You don't need a lot. So I would normally prefer like a bigger brush for this, but let's go with this one for now. As you can already see, there's uh, some gray still on my paintbrush and it's coming onto the canvas, which I hate, but I'm also lazy. So what can you do? And you know what would make this even more realistic? If the clouds weren't so bright. Like why are they bright when the rest is so dark and gloomy? Unless that's your aesthetic. So let's fix that. I just added some really shading. Okay, so I'm just going to add a bit of blue in between them to break them up. This is a bit, this, this is really too much. You know, speaking of which though, let's make the sky a little darker anyway. Let's grab some of this blue paint, which is not what we used for the sky, by the way, this one is. But we didn't use this one anyway, and it's pretty similar, just a bit darker. So let's use that one. Yeah. Okay, now it does get tricky here because we're now trying to paint the background after the foreground layer is already here. So we might paint over the mountains by accident. It's a real risk. The nice thing though, is that we barely have any paint on the brush right now. So even if we do paint over these mountains, which dried long ago, it'll be super light and easy to fix afterwards. So if you are, you know, like, oh no, the paint is on my mountains, then fear not because we will fix it. We can just paint it um, with black over top afterwards, which is super easy because dark is dominant, the rule of life. Okay, so I'm definitely more satisfied with that. Now let's just fix those mountains. Okay, the paintbrush is split and that means it got a bit dry and stuck together. So you can just break it up against the paper towel or like add a teeny bit of water and then do that. 
Okay, so now we're basically done. The sky is pretty empty though, so what I would do is add some things like birds flying away off into the distance. And I personally usually make like those M-shaped birds that you learn how to do in grade school. Super easy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add those afterwards, but I won't be able to record that because I do need both hands to hold the canvas. So yeah, give yourself a pat on the back because we are done. All right, so there you have it, y'all. We have made a painting. Um, I hope that it worked out for you guys and that you're happy with the result. And if you are, then please make sure that you like, comment how it worked out for you and subscribe to my channel if you didn't already. And um, if, you, if you aren't happy with the result, then I'm sorry, but maybe painting's not for everyone. Just kidding, anyone can do anything, okay? It's all reps. And also, if you want to see more painting tutorials, um, let me know. If you want to see me do a different type of painting, like oil painting or portrait painting, let me know that as well, and we can do that together. And if you want to see a drawing tutorial, let me know, and I'll, I'll whip out my trusty old pen and paper and teach you guys how to do some of that as well. So yeah, let's do things in social isolation together. Okay, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and join me next time. Take care. Love y'all. Bye.